Chapter 3, Lesson 5, Essential Question. How can you use base 10 blocks to model decimal addition? These are the drawings that we're going to use for modeling the base 10 blocks. The square represents the ones place, and with decimals, this is where the decimal would come between the ones place and the tens, tenths with the th, represented by that line. And then the hundredths, which is represented by the little circle. So this is the ones, the tenths, and the hundredths. So just another, the same connection. You can use base 10 blocks to help you find decimal sums. This is the ones, this is the tenths, and this is the hundredths. In this video, we are using drawings even though it calls for base 10 blocks. We are going to just do drawings and I'll be doing it down here in the bottom right. Step one, it says, use base 10 blocks to model the sum, which sum means to add 34 hundredths and 27 hundredths. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my picture here. You see if you can draw it as well. I still try to line up my place values in the drawings to make it easier. So you can see here in my picture, I color coded the black is 34 hundredths and the purple is 27 hundredths and I also still lined them up. I also grouped them in fives. I didn't have any fives in the tenths. But I did have a group of five here, so just something to keep in mind when making your drawings. B tells us the next step is to add the hundredths first by combining them. And we need to think, do we need to regroup them? Do we have ten or more hundredths? The answer to that is yes. So I'm going to take my um, marker and I'm going to circle ten hundredths. There was four here. That's a group of five, so that means I only need one more. And I have a group of ten. With that group of ten, I'm going to actually cross them out as hundredths, and I'm going to draw an arrow and add one to my tenths, because it takes ten hundredths to become a tenth. So just to fill in this part, did we need to regroup the hundredths? The answer was yes. And why? See if you can answer that. A super simple response, yet correct, would be yes because there are more than ten hundredths, which then we regrouped. C tells us the next step is to add the tenths by combining them. So how many tenths are there and do we need to regroup the tenths? Yes or no and why? The answer is no because there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, so there is less than ten. So now the actual answer is how many hundredths? There's one one hundredth. And how many tenths? There was six. And there's my decimal. So the answer is sixty-one hundredths. And if you have the zero there, that's the same thing. It's still correct. So looking at our draw conclusions, they're asking, what if you combine the tenths first and then the hundredths? So what if we combined right here our tenths first before we combined all our little hundredths? How would you regroup? Well, you would actually still end up regrouping the hundredths. You would just have to remember to add in that extra tenth. I said that you would still regroup the hundredths into another tenth, then add it to the tenths you have. Number two, 
If you add two decimals that are each greater than 5 tenths, will the sum be less than or greater than 1? Explain. I want you to start by saying less than or greater. Which one is it? And then tell me why. The sum will be greater than 1. Now explain why it will be greater. I wrote greater you will have more than 10 tenths because 5 tenths plus 5 tenths equals 10 tenths. And once you have 10 or more, you're regrouping. So making connections is us using the quick pictures. So we can use the quick picture to add the decimals greater than 1. So we're going to model the sum. Remember, that means adding model the sum of 2 and 5 tenths and 2 and 8 tenths with a quick picture. This first one, 2 and 5 tenths, is this group right here. There's two ones and then 5 tenths. And then 2 and 8 tenths, there's two ones and 8 tenths. And you can see that it's kind of grouped in a 5 right here. So after the picture, you start at the far right of your quick picture and you add the tenths. So ask yourself, are there more than nine tenths? Yes or no? Yes. And then if there's more, we need to regroup, which is what they did here. They circled ten of them and crossed them out and they drew the arrow to add another tenth. And the next step is to add the ones. And how many ones do we have there? We have one, one, two, three, four, plus the regrouped. There's five. And so step three is to actually just draw what is left without this circle. So we need to draw five ones, and then how many tenths are left. So your quick picture of your answer should end up looking like five ones and three tenths. So if we write that down, it's going to look five decimal three, five and three tenths. We're now going to be moving into the share and show, which it's this question and the next page. So for the first question, it's one and thirty-seven hundredths plus 1 and 85 hundredths. They drew a quick picture, but they want you to complete it to find the sum. So start at the hundredths, circle 10 if you have 10, and regroup as necessary in the picture, and then redraw your final answer right here. And then obviously write your answer in digits on the line. So for number one, I had more than ten hundredths, and so I circled ten of them and made this tenth right here. And then I looked and counted my tenths up, and I had more than ten, so I circled ten and created a one to go right there. And now I'm going to redraw my final answer to clean it up. So I have three ones. One, two, three, and then I had two tenths left over, and I had two hundredths left over. So now I can write my digits. I had three ones, decimal, two tenths, and two hundredths. So three and twenty-two hundredths. Go ahead and work on your the rest of your share and show. I want to see the quick pictures. I want to see you stacking your pictures. So if this is 9 tenths, I'm going to have 9 tenths here on the top. And then I'm going to have 7 tenths on the bottom. And then I want to see you circling and regrouping as necessary. And then rewriting your final answer in digits on the line. 
but I must see the pictures. For number three, there is less than 10 in the hundreds, so I'm not going to do anything. But I have more than 10 in the tenths, so I'm circling 10 and creating a 1. And then rewriting it as 1 and 38 hundredths. Again, when I'm drawing my pictures, I am trying to line them up. So I have all my tenths right here and all my hundredths right here. I look at my tenths. I have less than ten. I just have five, so I leave them alone. But in my tenths, I have more than ten. So I'm going to circle ten of them and cross them out and create a new one and then rewrite my final answer. Number five, drawing my pictures and keeping it aligned and regrouping as necessary. I have one, one, zero tenths. I'm gonna leave a space and then five hundredths in groups of five as much as possible. Uh, zero ones, seven tenths, and then eight hundredths. Starting in the hundredths, I'm going to regroup. So that's a group of five and another group of five. Cross that out. Have a tenth. Count up my tenths. Do I have more than ten? No, so I'm done with my regrouping. My final answer is 1 and 83 hundredths. And number 6, I have 1 whole and 3 tenths. 1, 2, 3, and then 7 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and no hundreds. So I start at the tenths area and add those up. Do I have ten tenths? Three and seven, that is ten. So I'm going to circle all of them and cross them out and draw my new one. So if I rewrote this with the digits, I just have two holes I don't have any decimals, so I can just write two, or I can write two and zero tenths. Either is correct. And number seven, drawing my picture. Again, lining them up, starting with the hundredths. I have less than ten, so I leave those alone. In the tenths, I have more than 10, so I'm going to circle 10 of them, cross them out, make a new one, and then rewrite as digits. I have three ones and two tenths and three hundredths, so three and twenty-three hundredths. You may now work on the rest of your packet, and thank you for bearing with me with my voice for this lesson.